very very interesting uh, you know uh, person who who is allowing us to move from multinational bank to a very new concept called bank bazaar the first time i read about bank bazaar i said yeah, i heard policy bazaar but you know i i immediately called up shriram that okay uh, you know would you like to you know actually share about your organization your practices and i deliberately kept you little away uh, you know shriram uh, because i thought you would put us that you know little flavor like of course i give that credit to dr anjan also because in india we leave, we have only one reinsurance company so that's a very different segment he brought that also from global but uh, shriram all years that what is bank bazaar and what all you are doing in your organization thank you thank you rama uh, thank you for speakers bank bazaar is a fintech company uh, probably india's oldest fintech company we have just celebrated our 12th year anniversary we are a neutral marketplace for our customer to consume any banking insurance product presenceless paperless right uh, that's the innovation we bring in and you can choose your product uh um, now of which you want and you can consume it presenceless paperless um i will talk about innovations we bring in uh before that i just wanted to highlight when i wanted to start um once this the onslaught of covid happened um you know everyone was talking about the healthcare industry as one which is now the one which is running i respect it but i also believe the bfsi sector has been running parallelly the banks have been running but uh, and the payments have been happening and all other you know bfsi related actions are happening there was never a lockdown for this sector this vertical is going to be is only an essential sector it is going to be a fault tolerant uh, including the stock markets sometimes yeah so everything was been working all the 100 odd days right so this is this people cannot allow an excess any disruption there uh, it would have been a panic if people couldn't you know withdraw money if it would have been a panic you know something would have happened uh, what we have done is we haven't paid attention or given importance uh, what it probably calls for so what it means for us is it is your responsibility to note it that uh, these type of disruptions will happen um you know uh, not that i want but you know we have to be saying that it will happen uh, we have border border issues we have any country any industry these things are bound to happen uh, so when these things happen uh, the bfsi sector cannot afford to have a down time uh, it will have a social impact uh, so therefore uh, so it means uh, this fantastic scope for us to relook the overall thing and see that you know what needs to be looked differently uh, if we have not done in the past to ensure that things are not more robust in case of any other such disruptions come right so with that i uh, probably will keep my uh, you know opening remarks very um, short since i go last i asked these four questions to myself as an hr in the fintech space daily uh, at a high level then i have 10 more questions to ask myself uh, which are more tactical so let me and i think these four questions are very relevant to the fellow hr professionals too the first question i ask myself daily is is this vision mission still intact uh, meaning our short term long term goals is that gone for any uh, is there a change required if it is so what is that required uh, to stay focused on those right um, there could be there is still a possibility that because of the changes which has brought in right um, probably a microfinance company which is which has to go and meet the and the privilege sector on a daily basis where digital has not penetrated that probably their approach has to be very different so the first question is that my organization's focus uh, is the same and then what are we trying to do for my chart space uh, to ensure that it is repeatedly mentioned so that the employees and every system and processes continue to stay focused if so the second question i ask myself is the new 
spotlight on HR, right? I think Madhvi said there's a lot of focus on HR. I agree everywhere. Uh, machines are in the same place. Market is there. Money is in the same place. Only people are locked down. Therefore, the human resource people, function has become uh, very important, rightly so. Um, therefore, how do we justify this spotlight? How do we sustain this spotlight? And how do we make a huge impact as a function? Uh, you know, because of the increased focus HR has. Uh, in fact, the first 50 days, HR is actually acting as a CEO, uh, deciding that who will work and who will work from, from where, what will happen to them or, you know. So how do we use this opportunity to, you know, um, to take the function to the next level, integrating a lot more closer to the business? That's the second question I ask uh, that how, if I, if as a function we deliver, uh, there's no reason the spotlight should not continue on HR for a longer time. The third question I ask is, how do I ensure the trust of the employees, right, uh, is sustained and improved? Um, they keep hearing, even if we don't do, we have not laid off a single employee, but it doesn't mean they don't read. Uh, they know this is happening, that is happening. So there's always a fear, right? And how do we, how do we constantly engage with them, uh, not only from pure engagement perspective, but Make them feel comfortable that, look, this is the journey we are into, right? So what do we have to do? We can't be doing uh, on, uh, uh, a single email communication or one town hall. Something else has to be state focused uh, to allay the fears which can keep coming into the employee's mind. The last fourth question which I ask, I think is the question which we need to look at uh, regularly is, what is the innovation happening in the organization? Obviously, every organization is innovating aggressively because uh, the focus is very different. The innovations could be smaller. Innovation need not be always a big bang, right? Uh, like the scientific temples have moved from big bang innovations to incremental innovations, right? So the innovations can be very, very impactful, but need not be big bang. So what are all the pockets are innovating? Or which pocket of the organization has to innovate more and what HR has to do in that innovation journey is a fourth question I keep asking myself. Um, and because of that, what innovations HR has to do for its tools, IT tools we talked about, it could be things. These are the four questions I would say a high level. I think the HR folks have to ask on a daily basis uh, in these given conditions. As I said, there are many tactical questions. The top five in my mind is, what is our new talent pipeline? Is there a change? Uh, are we going to add more IT people and less of sales people? Or what is that? What is that? What is that we are going to do with that? Right? What is that on a daily basis? Uh, how is that going to change? Right? That question I wanted to ask. What policies have to be added? Or what policies have to be rewritten? And now you know there's no question of travel elements. This that many policies look very funny because there's no one even coming to work. Right? So what policies probably we have to, you know, uh, rewrite or have a look at. Third, what is happening to our leadership pipeline, right? Um, are we going to continue to look at leadership pipeline and how are these leadership focus performing? Uh, the fourth, according to me, the most important is, what is the new productivity measure we will all have? I think Madhavi touched upon it. Chandra did say that, you know, we are careful, we are not getting fatigued. But I, I have a feeling the productivity metrics, what we had, especially employee productivity, what it was and what it is today has calls for some different perspective. Um, you know, that's a, that according to me is something uh, which we, the organizations have done what they could do, uh, made people available, give them systems, and a few of them even give them chairs, get the internet connectivity, fine. What next? Uh, if this is going to be the normal, as Rona said, for some more time, so how are we going to change our productivity norms? Last, but there are many I said, but the last question is the, 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 the mental strength of the employees. I have a significant percentage of women employees who work from home. Uh, like Chandra mentioned, the fatigue there is much more because many of them have stopped their house supports. They have children at home with online courses, which is a new 
uh, devil in the place. Uh, we have everything in you now going normal at home, plus you have to work. Uh, they're actually doing 3x of what they are doing, supposed to do. Uh, I think there's a lot of, I, that area has not been spoken enough. I think that area calls for a lot of attention. Uh, even what was said in the society today, a man working from home and a woman working from home is not the same. Right? Uh, definitely an Indian woman has a lot more responsibilities, but she is being measured productively the same. Uh, I think that's something calls for, many of them calls for a continuous counseling and we need to provide that. As I said, there are many tactical questions which I want to ask on a daily basis, but these five questions I do ask myself and my team on a daily basis. With that, Runa, I hand it over back to you.